Uh, stenosis may result from the unequal size of the cusp, which is frequently seen in bicuspid aortic valves. When the commissures are situated in an anteroposterior plane, the coronary arteries usually arise from each sinus of valsava. When the commissures are situated in a frontal plane, the coronary arteries more frequently arise from the posterior sinus. In about 30% of cases, the stenotic valve is tricuspid with second leaflets that may or may not be of even size and variable degrees of peripheral commissural fusion. This type of valve produces a dome with a central stenotic orifice and it can constitutes the most favorable configuration for valvotomy. In rare instances, the valve may be unicuspid with a single commissure that may or may not present with peripheral fusion. A unicuspid valve is usually severely stenotic even in the absence of commissural fusion. In aortic valve stenosis, there is always a secondary concentric left ventricular hypertrophy which sometimes results in virtual obliteration of the left ventricular cavity. Endocardial Fibroelastosis as a result of chronic ischemia from high left ventricle wall stress is a more common feature of severe critical aortic stenosis of the near heart. Supravalvar aortic stenosis Supravalvar aortic stenosis can be localized or diffuse in the localized type the aortic narrowing is made by an annular ridge protruding into the lumen of the aorta immediately above the commissural attachment of the aortic cusps. The outer diameter of the aorta may be normal or reduced given an hourglass appearance to the ascending aorta. In the diffuse type, the narrowing of the lumen and the abnormal thickness of the wall usually involves the ascending aorta and extends to the origin of the head vessels. The st stenotic region has a second intima and hypertrophy of the media with an increase in fibros and elastic tissues. Abnormalities of the aortic cusps are present in at least one third of cases, the most common being under development of the left coronary cusp. Sometimes the supravalvar ring may uh, almost cover the already diminuted diminutive entry into the sinus of valsava. At times, the free edge of the cusps is adherent in places to the ring. This may impair the filling of the left coronary artery. The coronary arteries are often dilated and tortuous. Peripheral stenosis of the pulmonary arteries are the most common associated anomalies. Supravalvar aortic stenosis has also been described in association with uh, unusual elfin phases, mental retardation, and infantile hypercalcemia. This syndrome is often known as the Williams syndrome. Subvalvar aortic stenosis. Fixed subaortic uh, stenosis can be discrete or diffuse. The common type of discrete stenosis is made of a crescent or less commonly a complete ring or fibrous tissue that lies 5-10 mm beneath the aortic valve. The orifice is usually eccentric. The fibrous shelf is attached to the anterior cusp of the mitral valve and the second endocardium of the ventricular septum. Sometimes the shelf may also be attached to the aortic cusps. The left ventricular myocardium shows concentric hypertrophy when the lesion is severe and long-standing. There is often excessive septal bulging. There is some evidence to suggest that this type of discrete subvalvar aortic stenosis is not congenital but an acquired obstruction secondary to flow disturbances in the left ventricular outflow tract. Diffuse subvalvar aortic stenosis is caused by a circumferential zone of fibromuscular hypertrophy below the aortic valve and extending downward into the left ventricle cavity.
This type of obstruction is to be differentiated from hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, a genetic disease involving the myosins and troponin. The clinical spectrum is characterized by basal septal ventricular hypertrophy and the dynamic obstruction associated with uh, abnormal systolic anterior motion of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve into the lvot. Clink, clinical presentation and diagnosis. Neonats and infants with critical aortic valve stenosis present in severe congestive heart failure with reduced volume peripheral pulses and a systolic action murmur in the aortic area that may uh, sometimes be unimpressive because of low cardiac output. The chest X-ray shows cardiomegaly and the electrocardiogram reveals left ventricular or biventricular hypertrophy. T-wave chains in the left chest leads are present on the electrocardiogram of most patients. The diagnosis is confirmed by cross-sectional echocardiography and Doppler study. A, a doming dysplastic aortic valve and a hypertrophied and often dilated left ventricle are the typical uh, echocardiography features of critical aortic valve stenosis. The aortic valve annulus is frequently measured at less than 6 mm in diameter. There is often some degree of endocardial fibrosis hypoplasia of the left ventricular or aortic annulus. Care must be taken to rule out a coarctation of the aorta with associated bicuspid aortic valve because in the presence of low cardiac output, the clinical and echocardiogram features may be misleading. Patients with congestive cardiomyopathy resulting from primary myocardial disease or anomalous origin of the left coronary artery from the pulmonary artery have a symbol dilated left ventricle and a normal aortic valve. The differentiation between critical aortic stenosis and left ventricular hypoplasia may be difficult. The Doppler gradient across the aortic valve can be misleading in a situation of low cardiac output. A patent ductus arteriosus is not uncommon in neonatal aortic stenosis. A ductal dependent systemic circulation with right to left shunt at ductal level can be seen in the most severe cases. Mitral valve anomalies are common in this group of patients with multi-level left heart lesions. In the majority of cases, the diagnosis can be made without cardiac catheterization. Children and young adults with aortic stenosis may remain asymptomatic even with important gradients. However, angina and or breathlessness and or syncope during exercise usually indicate significant obstruction. Congestive heart failure occurs uh, exceptionally in the absence of previous warning symptoms. On the chest X-ray, the ascending aorta is often prominent, indicating a post-stenotic dilatation. Serial, echocardiogra serial Doppler echocardiographic techniques are currently sufficiently reliable to estimate aortic valve gradients and left ventricle dimensions, thus avoiding the need for cardiac catheterization. The symptoms of congenital subvalvar aortic stenosis are similar to those of the valvar variety. The echocardiogram is usually diagnostic in demonstrating a discrete localized or diffuse stenosis and can also easily differentiate the discrete obstruction from the categoristic features of obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Trivial or mild aortic valve uh, incompetence is present in about two thirds of cases with uh, subaortic stenosis. The clinical features and uh, physical signs of subvalvar aortic stenosis are similar to those in other types of congenital aortic stenosis. It is necessary to outline the type and extension of the obstruction and to assess the pulmonary arteries in view of the fragrant association of subvalvar aortic stenosis with peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis. However, cardiac catheterization and angiography may interfere with the coronary flow in the setting of compromised coronary ostia. Magnetic resonance imaging is currently our preferred choice of safe imaging to obtain the necessary information in this condition.